Well, it's official. Philip Johansson is not re-signing with the Minnesota Wilds, so the Wilds get an extra pick in this year's draft. What should they have done back in 2018 at that spot in the first round? We take a look at that, plus a look at how Judd Brackett has done over the last couple of seasons with his draft picks, all today on Locked on Wild. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Locked On Wild is free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we react to the news that Philip Johansson will not be signing with the Minnesota Wild thus giving the Wild an additional second-round pick in this year's draft. We look at what the Wilds maybe could have done instead of drafting Johansson and why things didn't work out. Plus, we look at uh, how the Wild have done in drafts since then to see if that uh, decision is one that they will uh, likely have to repeat here uh, in the next couple of seasons. My name is Seth Topal, host of Locked on Wild and veteran Minnesota sports content producer with well over a decade's worth of experience covering your favorite Minnesota sports teams, uh, leading you through Locked On's off season and uh, guiding you through the uh, Dennis System 2.0 here at uh, Locked on Wild. Trying to uh, break things up a little bit. Uh, we do have plenty of uh, player evals to get through here. Um, within the next uh, couple of months. But obviously the big news coming through today that uh, Philip Johansson not going to sign with the Minnesota Wilds, which means that uh, the Wild will receive a second round compensatory pick. Uh, and that gives the Wild now seven selections in the 2022 NHL draft at this point. A first round pick, two seconds, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth round pick. So uh, a lot of draft capital for Judd Brackett to work with. Now, for Philip Johansson, he had uh, started to play better. It just pretty much point blank, it was just not a good selection by the Minnesota Wild at that spot. Now, part of that is... I think a large part of that has to be put on the team for uh, drafting a guy that, you know, is is a good player. Johansson is a good player. Just was too high for him to be drafted in that first round and uh, ended up putting a lot of pressure on him to, you know, live up to that and just never ended up getting the chance to be able to. So, uh, unfortunate situation for the Wild that um, it will not end up um, with him getting to the NHL level here in Minnesota. Now, whether or not that happens uh, at some point later um, could be with uh, with another team. I got to tell you, though, I was floored when uh, kind of looking into this because, you know, obviously – this happened back in 2018. And so that feels like just forever ago. And the craziest part about this is that Johansson is, uh, is still a, uh, a super young prospect. Uh, he is uh, 22 as of right now. And so um, just still has uh, a lot of time left in front of him. Now, obviously, um, has not materialized into anything that uh, is NHL ready at this point, but still can end up being a good player at um, some other level, you know, overseas or uh, or something along those lines. But you know, I think the thing that I circle back to is this shows you how important it is to have 
personnel in your draft department that can mitigate these types of selections. You don't have the first round picks that don't pan out. Now, not all picks are always going to pan out. And I think it's interesting to note if we go back and look at the 2018 draft in the first round, a lot of times the biggest question that's asked in this situation or in the situation of a first round pick not panning out in other sports is, well, who was there that uh, the Wilds could have taken that would have made this um, that would have made this work out better? Interesting thing is that uh, you, you look at everybody beyond that 24th overall pick um, in the first round. The player that has played the most games is Rasmus Sandin for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. He's played 88 NHL games, and um, that's that's it. Like it's it's not as though a lot of other guys on this list have really impacted the NHL level um, at this point. Now, Sandin for the Maple Leafs is uh, 21 years old. In this past season, he played 51 games with the Maple Leafs, had uh, five goals and 11 assists. So uh, a defenseman who did make it uh, end up getting into the uh, at the NHL level here this season. Uh, the other name is Joe Valeno uh, for the Detroit Red Wings, and he p- played 66 games. Uh, for the Red Wings this season in his age 22 season. So this this shows you how long as well it takes for prospects to really hit the NHL level is that those two guys are really the only ones. And, and I'm th- there are certainly others if you look up near the top of this draft class. Um, there are some other names that have played a ton of games. I mean, Brady Tuchuk, uh, Jess Berry, Coach Kinemi. Uh, Andre Svechnikov, and uh, you know, you've got Quinn Hughes at seven, um, Rasmus Dahlin for the Buffalo Sabres. So, you've got names at the top of this first round that have obviously played uh, a hand, a, several seasons worth of games already, um, and, and have made a big impact. But you look at 24 and below, I mean, the uh, St. Louis Blues pick. At 25, um, has not yet made it to the uh, NHL level, uh, that being Dominic Bach. Um, so has not made it as of yet. I'll preface that uh, by looking at these names, you know, it is possible entirely that some of these guys uh, are also not um, re-signing with their respective teams. But uh, based off of this list that, uh, that I'm looking at, courtesy of HockeyReference.com, um, it just it shows you the games that players have played uh, in the NHL level so far. Uh, and so that's an interesting tool to uh, to take a look at. Now, obviously, one that uh, was at pick 22 that is uh, starting to make more of an impact here in these Stanley Cup playoffs is Keandre Miller for the New York Rangers. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, the Ottawa Senators, um, their pick, uh, Jacob Bernard Docker, uh, 13 games at the NHL level. Uh, Nicholas Bodine, uh, 22 games and uh, down the list. So you look at like, well, what could the Wild have done uh, to mitigate that pick not working out for them? There wasn't really anybody that has uh, made a huge impact at the uh, the NHL level as of yet. And you can even extend that down into the second, the third, the fourth, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, really, the biggest name that has, uh, has made an impact at the NHL level is Alexander Romanov for the Montreal Canadiens with 133 NHL games. Beyond that, it, it's looking like it's a draft that, A, has not really made its impact as of yet in that later portion of the first round. And so I don't know that the situation would have turned out any differently 
for the Minnesota Wild, regardless of who they took, unless they moved up to um, to get somebody in particular uh, with that draft. So I, I like that we're giving Judd Brackett an additional second round pick to play with, considering some of the names that he has already selected uh, for the Minnesota Wild. Now, before we get to uh, to what Brackett has done since he took over, uh, I do want to look at uh, a couple of the other seasons, um, both recently and we'll, uh, we'll go before the uh, 2018 NHL draft as well a little bit, just to see some of the, uh, the picks that were made by the Wild and uh, how things played out. So uh, we'll take a little bit of a journey to uh, the last couple of uh, NHL drafts for the Minnesota Wild before we push forward to look at how Judd Brackett has done since he took over. All that and more on today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning like is your Odyssey an LX or an EX? And why wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. You can save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend anywhere from 30 to 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? RockAuto.com is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and RockAuto.com's prices are reliably low for every customer. So head to RockAuto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Make sure to write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, all at RockAuto.com. Continuing today's episode of Lockdown Wild, once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen of the day, make sure you are tuned into the Lockdown NHL podcast so you can get the full lowdown on both the Eastern and Western Conference Finals, Colorado and Edmonton starting off with a bang like we all expected. So make sure to check out the Lockdown NHL podcast wherever you listen to your podcast, free and available anywhere. Continuing with our look at uh, how the Minnesota Wild have done with their first round draft selections, uh, we're going to focus on the uh, the area both before Philip Johansson and before Judd Brackett took over, uh, just trying to kind of illustrate the point that not every first round pick is going to work out. And so you just want to try to minimize the number of times that um, – your picks end up not necessarily panning out. Um, you want to have you want to have some hits certainly, uh, and you just want to try to mitigate the misses. So we uh, we dial back to the 2016 NHL draft. Now this was a, a very good draft um, because obviously the name at the top, Austin Matthews. You're not going to get much better than that. But uh, you look at some of the other names on this list, Matthew Tuchuk, who really took off here uh, this season. You've got you know Patrick Laine at the top of the list. Uh, some of the other names up and down this list have, uh, have certainly uh, impacted things uh, as well. Uh, and you look at where the Minnesota Wild were at, they picked 15th. So right in the middle. And uh, the pick that the Wilds went with was Luke Cunnan, a center from Wisconsin. Now, Cunnan in 251 games, 46 goals, 47 assists. And uh, for Cunnan, was uh, a, a player for the Wilds for three seasons, 2017, 2018, 2018, 2019, and 2019, 2020. Really blossomed in 2019, 2020. Had 15 goals, 16 assists, then was uh, traded to Nashville. Uh, I believe that was in the I believe that was in the Nick Bonino trade, and so played um, has played for Nashville the last two seasons. 
and um, right around a, t- a 10 to had 13 goals this year. But uh, some of the reports from Nashville that uh, Cunning didn't, you know, didn't take that next step that uh, you would like to see from a player at that age, uh, age 24, you'd like to see a player kind of take a, a step forward and just didn't necessarily do that. Uh, beyond that pick at 15, uh, you have the Arizona Coyotes taking Jacob Chikrin. Uh, that's certainly a notable name from that uh, draft. I mean, if you look further down, um, not really a lot. Uh, Tage Thompson to the St. Louis Blues at 26, uh, a player who has had a similar level of success to uh, to what Cunning done is has actually exceeded that point total. Uh, but uh, I think Chikrin might be the most notable name um, of that grouping. Uh, Brett Howden for the Lightning had uh, has 69 points in 225 games. So uh, I would say those two are probably the most notable names at um, the uh, the end of that list. And now Howden playing with the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, so maybe Chikrin ends up being the, uh, the pick that makes more of the impact. Now in the second round, you got a couple of guys who you could look at and say, well, geez, you should have gone with them. Uh, Jordan Cairo at 35th overall. Then of course you got, uh, Alex to to the Blackhawks at 39 and, uh, Sam Gerard, another name. And then, uh, Philip, uh, Ronek for Detroit. So a few names, but main point being is that uh, Cunning maybe didn't live up to the potential that uh, that he showed and so that could I think be that could I think be characterized as not not necessarily a miss, but not really a true hit um for that pick. Um, if we look at uh, 2017, the Minnesota Wilds picked in the, um, actually, that must have been, yes, I think it was. I uh, believe this was the Martin Hansel trade. And so the Wild did not have a first round pick in uh, 2017 and uh, boy that uh, that certainly worked out well so we'll uh, we'll skip it and uh, we'll just count that as a miss because Martin Hansel did not really pan out for the uh, the Minnesota Wild there but um, looking at uh, some of the potential selections uh, in that uh, that first round I mean guys in the uh, the bottom half Robert Thomas, who is also starting to uh, to really take off for the St. Louis Blues. Um, you've got, um, hey, how about the guy who has uh, started to really fire it up for the New York Rangers, Philip Heedle, who was drafted at 21 overall in that draft. Um, not a whole lot of guys other than Jacob uh, Jake Edinger at uh, 26. Not a whole lot of guys in the back half that have made a uh, huge impact as of yet. Um, so that's, you know, that's another point to, uh, to keep in mind as well is that it takes a while for these guys to get to the NHL level. So 2016, 2017, and then 2018 with Philip Johansson, not, uh, not working out super well um, for the, uh, the Minnesota wild, but we moved to 2019 and uh, some good things happening for the Minnesota wild. Of course, the uh, the pick at twelve in twenty nineteen, uh, Mr. Matt Boldy, who we saw take the uh, the Wild by storm the back half of the season, and so at this point you'd have to say that that selection did work out, uh, and it has so far. Boldy showing that he is more than capable of playing at the NHL level, and uh, if not for that uh, unfortunate injury at uh, training camp, could arguably have made a a much bigger uh, impact on the wild here this season likely would have been at least in the running for the, uh, the Calder trophy this year. So that one worked out and 
the uh, the nice thing is is that when uh, Judd Brackett took over as uh, the uh, the draft guru for this Minnesota Wild team, it's only seemingly gotten better from there. And so uh, we'll look at how Judd Brackett has done and uh, how Bill Guerin has helped him get there as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. You can find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including the NBA playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, plus the Stanley Cup playoffs, fights, and even next season's NFL playoffs. The Bet, uh, BetOnline.net is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. You can find all that and more at Bet Online, where the game starts. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. And uh, taking a look at uh, the Minnesota Wild's recent first round draft history to see if we have any concern for uh, repeats of the Philip Johansson situation. Now, 2020 was Judd Brackett's first draft uh, as the um, as the one running the show uh, for the draft uh, for the Minnesota Wilds. Uh, the Wilds had um, one pick in the first round, and that was the uh, ninth overall selection, and uh, ended up going with Mr. Marco Rossi. Now, this one may at this point look precarious just because of uh, how things have gone over the uh, the last couple of seasons. You know, Rossi injured at the end of, of this year, so he wasn't able to assist the Wild in the postseason and uh, obviously had COVID before that and working his way back. But let's keep in mind that um, it's expected that there's going to be a uh, pretty – sizable roster, uh, a sizable amount of playing time for Rossi if he's ready for it um, to uh, to hop up to the NHL level and uh, fill the void that is expected to be left uh, when Kevin Fiala is traded. It's also, it's not as though he's he's coming in and he's, you know, he has shown nothing. Like, let's keep in mind that he broke the Iowa Wilds points record uh, this season and had just a, a sensational year uh, before uh, kind of getting worn down and injured down the stretch. So we'll see our first extended look at Marco Rossi here uh, this season, and uh, we'll be able to tell, we'll be able to get a little better idea at that point if he is, um, if he's somebody that is able to, you know, to live up to some of the expectations put on him as a top 10 pick. But Let's keep in mind he has made it to the NHL level already uh, with a couple of games under his belt um, back when uh, the Wild had a few injuries heading into uh, their game against the Boston Bruins. So uh, he did play in a couple of games and uh, was with the team during training camp. Um, the Wild wanted to just make sure that he you know, gets through the full season down in Iowa, and he did. And so uh, I think the next step for him is to hop up to the NHL level. So Rossi already uh, ahead of schedule um, compared to where uh, Johansson was. Now, obviously, being a top 10 pick and being a 24th overall pick in the first round, a little bit of a different path. But still, Rossi um, will have plenty of opportunity to uh, to show that he is uh, is worthy of a first round pick here uh, this next season. 2021. Minnesota Wild had a couple of first-round picks. Uh, Jesper Wallstead at 20, and um, Carson Lambos at 26. Uh, Wallstead signing his entry-level contract, going to be with the Iowa Wild this season. And after that, likely the backup for the Wilds, then maybe the starter after that. So that looks like a good first-round pick for the Minnesota Wilds. And from what we have heard from Lambos, from uh, Spoke Z, keeping an eye on things, um, he's he's coming along as uh, as a defenseman. You know, not not um, 
somebody with the pedigree, I think, of Wallstead, but uh, coming along and a player that you know could be part of this roster uh, within the next few seasons. But I think you look at what um, has happened here over the last three seasons. The Wild have a pretty likely hit in Matt Boldy. They have a pretty likely hit in Jasper Wallstead. And we'll see what happens with this season, but based off of what he did at Iowa, um, looks like they may have a pretty likely hit with uh, Marco Rossi as well. So three players, one each season, that uh, that seem like they're going to be a hit uh, for the Minnesota Wild, which compared to those uh, those three previous seasons that we discussed, um, Luke Cunnan, Philip Johansson, and no first round pick. Uh, that this grouping of 2019 to now has already beaten um, what those guys have done. So things are trending in the uh, the right direction, and now the Wild will have at least one first round pick this year to try to do the same thing and to try to find a hit uh, that uh, can match what they've done in the first round over the last few seasons. So all eyes on what uh, Bill Guerin and Judd Brackett can come together for uh, for the draft. And of course, we'll have plenty of NHL draft coverage um, here leading up to the draft come July. So make sure to stay tuned and uh, stick with us for as much draft coverage as you can possibly handle as part of the uh, off-season plan for Locked on Wild. That is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Wild. So now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure you head over to Locked on Sports Minnesota to check out the Ron Johnson Show and Superior Sports Talk to great A-plus sources of your favorite Minnesota sports teams and the news around them from two A-plus Minnesota sports voices. Uh, the Ron Johnson Show and Superior Sports Talk, both free and available wherever you listen to podcasts as part of Locked On Sports Minnesota. Locked on Wild, also free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. So make sure to check things out. Make sure to follow along with us through the offseason on social media as well. We will keep you up to date with everything going on in the realm of Minnesota Wild Hockey with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.